Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. San Antonio police say a woman was run over and killed last night. We'll tell you how many suspects are detained so far and who SAPD is looking for this morning. President Joe Biden's legal team finds more documents containing classification markings in a second location. How the new GOP chairman of the House Oversight Committee is responding to the news this morning. The wind is whipping this morning in many areas. How much uh, cooler will we get throughout the day today? And what about tomorrow morning? Mike is standing by with more on our forecast. Good morning, everybody. We jump ahead to Thursday. It is January 12th. Hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, yes, yeah, a little breezy out there, but it's kind of nice for now, I guess. It is. Uh, Mike, I, I live far north side. You know that. Uh, a little bit cooler up there. Mm -hmm. As I got down here, it was still relatively warm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it will cool down somewhat this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, cooler than where we've been the past couple of mornings. But then the, the cooler air, you know, because with the wind kind of keeps things stirred up, doesn't allow the coldest air to settle down at the surface. But that's going to be the case the next couple of mornings. But yeah, it is windy out there. Uh, I just sent out a push. Hang on to your hats, kids, small animals, anything else. <laughs> garbage cans because yeah we've got some good winds beautiful beautiful start a lot of clear skies maybe one or two clouds hanging around out at the airport we're still at 63 right now so we're still at the normal high temperature some uh, 50s in the hill country as of right now but the air has really really dried out uh, it's much more pleasant when you step outside and yes we do have those winds out of the northwest 10, 15, 20 miles per hour, and then the gusts on top of that, 28 right now, Castorville, 29, New Braunfels, and 27 over there at Lost Maples. And we're going to be seeing wind gusts even 30, 35 miles per hour throughout the rest of the day. As far as the allergens, going to be interesting to see what Mountain Cedar does. The updated count comes out in about uh, roughly three hours or so. So how much those trees get uh, shaken up. And then with the windy conditions all day today, Tomorrow's count also is going to be interesting with mountain cedar mold. It was on the low side from yesterday's reading. So this morning we'll continue to drop down a few more degrees down to the mid 50s, mostly clear skies, and it's going to be blustery and then blustery throughout most all of the day. Northwesterly wind 15, 25 miles per hour gusting from there. 65 for high temperature. Normal average high 63, so right in the ballpark of where we should be. Uh, yeah, you need a jacket this morning, definitely in the next couple of mornings. Talk about that in the weekend forecast. Long holiday weekend coming up. A little hint looks pretty nice. Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. New details this morning on a story we first told you about last night on the night beat at 10. San Antonio police say a fight turned deadly when a woman was run over. Right now, San Antonio police are still searching for the suspects and the vehicle involved in this incident. Now, it happened last night just before 9 on Angela Walk in South Pico, so not far from downtown. We are all told that the fight involved was involved between 15 and 30 people. During the fight, police say someone got into a vehicle and ran over a 29-year-old woman. She died at the scene. Two people are detained, but police say the suspect got away with one or two other people. They are looking for a person in a light colored four door car. Officers are still working to gather more information. At last check, they were talking to witnesses about the situation. And as we learn more, we will share it with you on air and online at KSAT.com. This morning, President Biden's legal team has found another batch of classified information at a second location, according to sources briefed on the matter. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, so far there's no word from the White House on the issue, but some Republicans are talking. The paper trail of classified documents is now a little longer for President Joe Biden. Obviously it would have been better had it not happened in the first place, right. um, but they've certainly dealt with it the right way. And Sources briefed on the issue tell CNN Biden's legal team uncovered a second set of classified documents after the initial discovery in November of classified information at the think tank office used by then Vice President Biden. What's so surprising to me is that this came out before the election. Why does his Department of Justice treat people differently? Every time we find something that comes out before the election dealing with Biden's family, it's pushed under the rug. South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham is among the Republicans calling for Attorney General Merrick Garland to open a full throttle investigation into the situation. I agree with the Republicans. They There should absolutely be a special counsel appointed uh, in to review this matter. 
Classified records are supposed to be stored in secure locations, and the Presidential Records Act says all White House records are to be given to the National Archives after an administration ends. Classified documents belong in classified settings, and if we're having consistent problems across parties with exiting government officials not putting those classified documents where they belong, then I think that's something that we should take up. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Well, now to more on that biggest flight stoppage since 9-11. The U.S. government is launching an investigation into yesterday's air travel breakdown, which grounded thousands of planes for hours. Flights in and out of San Antonio International seem relatively normal this morning, too, according to the airport's website. The Federal Aviation Administration says preliminary indications trace the outage to a damaged database file or a corrupted file. Agency said it would take steps to avoid another similar disruption. The breakdown showed how much American air travel depends on the computer system that generates alerts called NOTAMs or notice to air missions. Before a plane takes off, air crews and air dispatchers must review those notices, which include details about weather, runway closures, or other factors. Classes are back in session at the University of Idaho. That's following winter break and an arrest in the murders of four students. Brian Koberger is charged with four counts of first degree murder and one count of burglary. He will be in court today for a preliminary status conference. Meanwhile, University of Idaho officials are working to make sure students feel safe. The campus sits within walking distance of the King Road home where those lives were taken. The university is offering counseling for students and staff. Move over Mars. NASA is touting a new discovery that is potentially habitable for life. This is an illustration of an exoplanet. A NASA mission spotted the Earth-sized planet about 100 light years away. They say the fourth planet orbiting a small star's habitable zone. That's the zone where a planet is safe enough a distance from the star that can potentially have liquid water on the surface. According to scientists, the potential for water also suggests the potential for life on that planet. And time now is 436 and 63 degrees for now. Our San Antonio Spurs in Memphis last night looking good in the beginning. We'll show you why they weren't able to seal the deal. Ooh, plus, what you need to know if you're one of the thousands of Spurs fans traveling to the Alamo Dome tomorrow night. I suspect they're going to tell us to be there extra early. I think even then there'll be a lot of traffic. Probably so. Speaking of, let's go outside right now with a, a trans guide. This is at I-10 and Frio and I-10 at Woodlawn. Stephen will be along in just a bit to get us updated on the situation for the full two hours of GMSA. And let's look out there with live cam, 63 degrees, not too bad, a little breezy. Actually, it's RJ Marquez in today. Oh, that's right. Yes. We'll see RJ pretty soon. Our Spurs in Memphis last night trying to avoid the season sweep from the Grizzlies and also snap an eight-game losing streak to Memphis, longest such streak in Coach Pop's career. Spurs pushing the pace early to Trey Jones to Jeremy Sohan for the monster jam plus the foul. Spurs up five. Then Sohan comes up with a steal and dishes to Jones who gets it to the hoop for the bucket and the foul. The wheels fall off in the second as Memphis knocks down three consecutive threes, part of an 11-0 run. Spurs trail by 14 going into the half. Trey Jones driving baseline finds uh, a cutting Jeremy Sohan for the one-handed punch. Memphis lead down to eight. Later, Malachi Branham going baseline and finishes with the reverse layup. But Spurs down 15 after three. Spurs keep shooting Josh Richardson with back-to-back -back threes. Then Keldon Johnson on the attack puts it up and in. Spurs on a 11-3 run and the lead is down to nine. Richardson nails the floater in the lane and the Spurs only down three with over two and a half minutes to play. But John Morant just too much to handle. He gets his own miss for the putback. Keldon led the silver and black with 24. Spurs fall 135-129. I felt really great tonight. You know, I felt comfortable. I felt, I felt like, um, you know, I really didn't get out of rhythm. I think the first, my first couple shots, uh, I think I were, were a little forced. But other than that, I felt like um, everything was real. I got to the free throw line, and um, you know. I wish we could have we could have pulled it out, but uh, we kept fighting, man. I'm proud of my team. I couldn't be more proud of the guys. Um, you know, um, we we battled so much this season, and um, you know, it, it just shows out there. We we, we had no quit out there. 
Next up, Spurs will set the NBA all-time attendance record for a regular season game when they host the Golden State Warriors tomorrow in the Alamo Dome. The team says that 63,592 tickets are sold, which will break the old record of 62,046 set by the Bulls and Hawks in the Georgia Dome back in March of 1998. But ticket sales are still open. That could grow to over 65,000, raising some pretty serious concerns about traffic. Since unlike the Valero Alamo Bowl and the Final Four, Spurs fans are coming from home, not from downtown hotels. So fans are encouraged to get there early or please use via park and ride. Free parking begins at 3 o'clock tomorrow at City Garages, City Tower, St. Mary's. Alamo Dome doors open at 430. Have fun, be safe, and pack your patience. It's going to be a lot of traffic. It's going to be a lot. I know. We didn't anticipate that. I mean, we'd still go regardless, but we're like, oh, yeah, by the way. You'll be down there. You're still weighing your options on how to get down there, right? Maybe we should just, like, you know, I should work here and stay here and walk. I, I told her to use Sky 12 and oh. just get dropped off, but it doesn't work that way. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Okay. Time now, 443 and 63 degrees for now. Dangerous products keep causing big problems for parents at home and why some safety experts say companies are not doing enough to warn parents. An eye-opening video for parents everywhere. Up next, how a 13-year-old Texas teen was able to escape from being followed by someone in a black car. Welcome back. It is 446. The family of a 13-year-old boy is describing how he got away from being followed by a person in a black car all the way to his friend's house. ABC's Stephanie Ramos has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, it's an eye-opening video for parents everywhere. Every stop that I made, like every place that I went at, uh, the car was just there. That's 13-year-old Daniel Casino running from a car that he says followed him through this Katy, Texas neighborhood. Look closer. As Danny rides to a nearby friend's house, the car is seen driving up to the home before taking off. His parents we describing the ordeal to GMA. We called the police station, got somebody on. They came out pretty quickly. He realized there was a car following him from step one. I believe that that's what saved Daniel from a horrible life-changing situation and coming up at 7 a.m. we'll hear from their quick thinking son and have the expert advice parents everywhere need to know with your GMA first look I'm Stephanie Ramos ABC News New York hey this week we reported on more babies deaths linked to popular infant inclined sleepers after they were recalled so are companies doing enough to warn parents of the dangers as 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz reports some safety experts say the answer is no Breaking news tonight on a major recall of the popular rock and play sleeper made by Fisher Price. That was the spring of 2019 when Fisher Price and Kids 2 infant inclined sleepers were recalled. That came after a Consumer Reports investigation revealing at least 36 deaths linked to the products. Since then, that number has tripled and 12 of those deaths came after the recalls. These sleepers position infants on an inclined sleeping surface, and that increases the risk of suffocation if it makes their heads drop forward onto their chests while they're sleeping. More deaths means even though the sleepers can't legally be sold, they are still used in homes. When a product gets recalled, it's the manufacturer's responsibility to both get it out of the stores and to alert people who already own it to stop using it immediately. And um, safety experts say that they just haven't seen Fisher Price or kids to do enough in that area. According to Mattel, Fisher Price's parent company, as of last March, only nine and a half percent of the rock and play sleepers had been accounted for since the recall. In other words, more than four million recalled sleepers are potentially still in use. Mattel says Fisher Price has worked diligently to remove all recalled product from the market. Kids too did not respond to a request for comment. To keep a baby safe, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends babies be put to bed only in products that meet federal safety requirements for infant sleep, such as a crib, bassinet, or play yard. And if you're struggling to get your infant to sleep, ask your pediatrician for advice. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Let's look outside with Trans Guy looking over at Loop 1604 at Bandera Road where things are moving and also I-10 at Frio.
Southbound this morning, driving in, Mike, I had a little bit of a tailwind. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably going to be the issue for <laughs> yes. everybody, right? Put it in neutral, you know, put up a sail and whew, yeah. put on in here. Gas so. mileage has not been better in that truck. If you uh, <laughs> drive, you know, a truck or something like that, big, big 18 wheeler, hang on with both hands, hang on to your hat and everything else because it is very blustery. It's going to stay that way throughout the day, but it feels so much better when you step outside with the humidity that is lower. Yesterday, of course, we had some of that fog hanging around here and a few clouds. It was Made for gorgeous, gorgeous sunrise. Sunrise this morning is going to be spectacular. Maybe one or two little clouds kind of hanging around here, but uh, yeah, beautiful. And of course, plane's going to be taking off the, that way up to the northwest later on or throughout the day, I should say. 63 here in town, so we still haven't, it's not a big cold front. Yes, we will stay cooler, just getting back down to normal readings over the next few days. 50s in parts of the hill country. We're still at the normal high right now, by the way. Do point temperatures have dropped dramatically. As a matter of fact, they've gone down anywhere 25, 30. At one point uh, earlier this morning, the dew point had dropped down 40 degrees compared to this time yesterday morning. So that drier air, notice how there's still a little bit of humidity down here to the south and east, and that drier is going to continue to work its way down to the southeast throughout the course of the day on these winds out of the northwest. 10, 15, close to 20 mile per hour sustained winds, gust 27, lost maples 29, new Braunfels, and we did did have a couple of wind gusts close to about 28 to almost 30 miles per hour. 30, 35 miles per hour is going to be pretty much the norm throughout the day as far as the gusts are concerned. We'll drop down a few more degrees. When you have this much wind out there, you don't really drop down as much as what you could just because it keeps the atmosphere stirred up, doesn't allow the heaviest, coldest air to settle down here. Uh, still grab a jacket. I mean, and even though wind chill formulas don't come into play when you're still above 50 degrees, you know, it feels a little cooler out there. We're going to make it up to the low 60s today at noon, and then we will rebound back to 64 degrees, 65 pardon me, by 4 o'clock for a high temperature and still breezy. And then once the sun starts to go down, the winds are going to be subsiding and that's going to allow the colder air to come on in here. So we'll have clear skies, light wind and very dry air tomorrow morning as well as Saturday. Then the humidity tries to come back in here. A little bit of dry air moves on in by Monday and then some more humidity toward the uh, the middle portion of next week. But it's uh, interesting to see what uh, temperatures they're going to be where they should be. So that's nice. We couple of clouds, a few uh, computer models want to keep a cloud or two around here this morning. Just one or a few of them and then lots of clear skies, sunshine, one or two clouds starting off Saturday morning. Sunday will have more clouds later on in the day. A few more hanging around here on Monday and then a lot of sunshine Tuesday, maybe a couple of showers by Wednesday. Wouldn't get too excited about that as of yet, but least there's a very small chance for some rain later on in the forecast. 61 today at noon, so we'll drop down a little bit and start to rebound back to the low 60s. Sunny, windy, and then a high temperature today up to 65, just about where it should be. Wind subsides tonight and clear skies. Dry air, perfect radiational cooling, so we're going to be down in the upper 30s here in town, 38 in, uh, by Saturday morning. So when you have upper 30s here in town, we're looking at some freezes in parts of the hill country, 65s for the next few days. Beautiful, beautiful weather. Enjoy it. Still really nice on Sunday. A couple of more clouds. Humidity starts to kind of work its way back in here, not overly humid, and then pretty warm on Monday, the long holiday weekend, another weak kind of front moves through on Wednesday just to get rid of some of the humidity and maybe a shower or two, but just enjoy the next few days. Hang on though. Extra spritz of final net mark. <laughs> okay. Do they still sell final net hairspray no these idea. days? Is it Aquanet? I think it's or the same thing. The same I, thing? I don't know. I, oh, <laughs> that was really powerful. It, yeah, it was kind of like spray shellac almost. I mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So you've actually finished furniture with that before, right? <laughs> no. Maybe. Right now, 453, 63 degrees. Up next, why it was a bad night for the Golden Globe Awards, plus some of the biggest names in rock are remembering guitarist Jeff Beck. 456 turns out not many people watch the Golden Globes on ABC plus the music world response to the passing of a talented guitarist. For the latest what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. 
the biggest names in rock remembering guitar god Jeff Beck, who died Wednesday following a short bout with bacterial meningitis. Collaborator Rod Stewart writes on Twitter that Beck was on another planet, one of the few guitarists that when playing would actually listen to him sing and respond. Mick Jagger writes, we have lost a wonderful man and one of the greatest guitar players in the world. And Beck's Yardbirds bandmate Jimmy Page posted on Instagram that Beck could channel music from the ethereal with his unique technique and limitless imagination. Jeff Beck was 78. Welcome to the 80th Annual Golden Globe Awards. If you didn't catch Tuesday night's Golden Globes, you weren't alone. The award show, which was suspended from NBC last year and back this year, saw its smallest audience ever, not counting a press conference during the 2008 writer's strike. 6.25 million watched on NBC, down 10% from 2021. A bunch of TV news from ABC, Jeopardy! and Wheel of Fortune have signed a new five-year deal to air on the network, and the Golden Globe-winning comedy Abbott Elementary has been renewed for a season three. And happy birthday, Howard Stern, the legendary radio host, is 69 today, while eight-time Emmy nominee Issa Rae is 38. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 457 and 63 degrees for now. Things are getting back to normal in the air this morning following the grounding of thousands of flights here in the U.S. yesterday. What the FAA is now saying about what went wrong. And despite a DWI charge and a hit and run crash he's accused in, Councilman Clayton Perry plans to return to the District 10 Council seat as soon as today. Why some are saying he should, should not. And checking the roads with Transkai 281 at San Pedro. No problems to report this morning other than those windy conditions out there. So be careful if you drive a large, uh, high-profile vehicle. Be right back. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A driver is dead this morning after leading Bear County deputies on a chase overnight. How the sheriff's office is saying that pursuit started and where it ended. I'm ABC's Justin Finch. U.S. airports are back online after yesterday's nationwide ground stoppage. Well, we are now learning about the computer glitch that disrupted flights and frustrated passengers again. And let's look out there with live cam, a nice, cool, fresh 62 degrees. It's nice and breezy out there right now. And good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, the 12th of January. Thanks for joining us. Yes, as soon as you open door, it, it, you will notice that it's a lot different than yesterday morning. The wind may carry the door away. I mean, not off the hinges, but I mean, it's pretty gusty out there, right, Mike? Yeah, as soon as you open the door, it may just kind of come on in there. But uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful morning. It is very, very windy. That's the thing we're going to be dealing with all day long. We're at 62, so we've dropped down one more degree. And look at that bottom number. That dew point is down to 21. The air Air has really dried out with this Pacific front that moved on through here. Wind is out of the northwest, primarily north to northwest, 13 miles per hour, but we've got some gusts on top of that. We'll drop down a few degrees this morning and then only rebound to, well, just about where we are, mid 60s for an afternoon high temperature, which is right about normal. Normal high being 63 degrees. Yesterday's aquifer reading did go up one tenth of a foot and the allergens. Now, this was from yesterday's count. Mountain cedar did go up. What's going to be interesting is since we We've had some windy conditions overnight. What the update this morning is going to be, which comes out in about um, two, three hours or so. And then also tomorrow's reading because it's going to be windy all day today. So you might want to stock up on the uh, the allergy medicine. Take a look at some of the uh, winds right now out of the north. 10, 15, close to 20 mile per hour sustained winds. Then we have the gusts. 24 Hondo, 28 New Braunfels, 27 over there in Lost Maples. We've already seen some gusts that are just over 30 miles per hour this morning. Morning, and we're going to be seeing 30, 35 mile per hour wind gusts at times throughout the day. So clear, cool, windy, not bone chilling cold. Grab a jacket though. Sunny, windy, mid 60s later on today. Like I said, just very close to a normal high temperature. Cold start tomorrow. So the wind's going to subside tonight. Clear skies, dry air, perfect radiational cooling. We're going to make it down to normal or even a little bit below normal. Haven't used that word in a long time. Tomorrow morning as well as on Saturday morning. And then nice big warm up up to the mid 60s throughout the day and then the weekend cold start in the morning beautiful in the afternoon slightly warmer on Sunday but yeah make some outdoor plans uh, this weekend and this is going to carry into Monday for the MLK holiday but it's going to be much warmer on Monday as well get all the details sorted out in just a couple of minutes traffic authority right now RJ Marquez good morning sir anything going on 
Yeah, good morning, Mike. And actually, you guys were talking about the wind. Felt a little bit of that on the way in. Got to the station about 20 minutes ago, so make sure you guys are taking that into account as you head out this morning. Taking a quick look at some Transguide traffic cameras. We see things are looking pretty smooth here. That's at Culebra Road and then I-10 East at Loop 1604. Things looking pretty good in that area as well. As we take a quicker look at our maps and you can see that traffic looking pretty smooth right now. A lot of green on our screen here. Nothing major to speak of. One thing I did want to bring up was that there is a vehicle fire being reported there at uh, Wurzbach Parkway at Perimbile Road. Again, not a major highway to speak of, but again, a lot of people use Wurzbach Parkway to get in and around that area in the northeast side. So just kind of keep that in mind if you're headed out this morning. But one more quick look outside at Transguide, US 281 at St. Mary's. Things looking pretty smooth there. 90 at couples things looking solid again just keep in mind if you're headed out just with the windy conditions out there just take some extra time if you need to and if you see any of these emergency vehicles on the side of the road go ahead and move over and let them do their work mark and stephanie back to you guys thank you rj New this morning, an early morning traffic stop and pursuit ends with a driver dead. According to Bear County Sheriff's Office, it all started just after midnight by JBSA Lackland on Highway 90. Now, BCSO says a deputy was pursuing a vehicle after the driver failed to stop for a traffic stop. The pursuit ended in the 7,000 block of West Military when they report that the driver crashed through a utility pole and rolled into a U-Haul parking lot. The driver was pronounced dead at the scene. Hotel Emma at the Pearl was closed for the night after first responders took 15 people to the hospital after a suspected carbon monoxide leak on the property yesterday. The hotel is going to test for more leaks later today. Hazmat crews say most of the victims are hotel staff. They uh, complained of headaches and nausea. Everyone is expected to be okay. The luxury hotel is part of the Pearl property. Since it's temporarily closed, guests and staff were relocated elsewhere. In Converse, a Ruffles truck goes on an unexpected rough ride after someone stole it from Walmart. Deputies say the man behind the wheel was 27-year-old Jeff Jeddon. They say he took the truck Tuesday from the Walmart on FM 78 and that he didn't go too far. He ended up at on Cavendish Court and jumped out of the truck while it was still moving and took off running. The runaway chip truck went, cr went then crashed into a pickup. The impact pushed into a garage that pick up into a garage door of a house. Deputies say they caught up with Jetton and arrested him. Flying troubles and delays are continuing at a time when travel is trying to make a comeback. AAA says travel bookings are now above the pre pandemic levels. AAA says its best advice is to consider using a travel agent to help you if you're stranded and consider buying travel insurance. If this is an investment, um, a big investment that you're making to travel, Think about that. Read the policy. Ask a travel advisor about the different options and, and see what um, is available. AAA also offers these little nuggets of advice. Book direct flights when you can and fly as early as possible in the day. Well, flights in and out of San Antonio International seem mostly on time this morning. As ABC's Justin Finch reports in Washington, Congress is pledging to investigate the FAA computer malfunction that led to the first nationwide flight ground stoppage since 9-11. At airports across the country, questions and confusion. When I walk in, it's just pure chaos. We got called for boarding, started the boarding, and then all of a sudden they called us off. More than 10,000 U.S. flights delayed and over 1,300 canceled Wednesday. The first nationwide ground stoppage since 9-11 now traced to an FAA system failure undergoing routine maintenance. A senior official says it appears an FAA computer engineer mistakenly replaced one file with another. The essential system then began showing problems before failing, despite FAA staffers' efforts to identify the issue. We're going to own it, we're going to find it, and we're going to fix it. ABC News learning the FAA first noticed a concern with its NOTAM, or Notice to Air Mission Systems, which provides real-time safety information to pilots before takeoff on Tuesday. The backup system kicked in and the main system followed. But ongoing issues overnight prompted the FAA's 7 a.m. nationwide ground stop, which was lifted by 9 a.m., but widespread delays had already begun. What people need to know is that we will not allow anything to take place that is not safe. 
Hours after that FAA ground stop, Canada's NOTAM system also saw allergies. Officials in Canada don't believe the two allergies are connected. The FAA fallout again puts aging air industry technology in the spotlight. Southwest Airlines partly blamed its cancellation of more than 15,000 flights two weeks ago on its own outdated system. And concerns about flights today. A top member of the Allied Pilots Association says the ripple effects of delays and cancellations from that ground stoppage could linger into Friday. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Now 509, 62 degrees. Councilman Clayton Perry could return to the District 10 Council seat as soon as today. Up next, why Mayor Ron Nirenberg doesn't think he should. Outside with live cam, the main weather headline for the day, according to Mike, is going to be the wind. And then we are settling in for some cooler mornings around here. He has more on that. We'll check back in with RJ Marquez, who has joined us this morning for complete traffic coverage. San Antonio City Councilman Clayton Perry plans to return to the District 10 Council seat as soon as today. That's despite the DWI charge in a hit and run crash that he's accused in. Today would mark 59 days since he took a leave of absence. In a letter to city officials today, he said, quote, by this notification, I assert that I have sufficiently addressed the issue that prevented me from carrying out my duties as a council member, end quote. Perry stopped short of saying how those, quote, issues were addressed in the past couple of months. Our Garrett Berger spoke to interim councilman Mike Gallagher, who was appointed to fill in for Perry been through some pretty good rehabilitation and I think it's been very very helpful for him. Any details on the rehabilitation? No, I think it would most likely uh, be something that Councilman Perry should talk about if he does at all because I'm sure some of it uh, would be medical type of questions. Mayor Ron Nierberg has said without a conviction City Council does not have the authority to remove a member but if the accusations are true Nierberg says he believes Councilman Perry should resign. 514, 62 degrees. And let's look out there with Trans Guide, looking over at Highway 90 at Couples where things are moving, but we're gonna go ahead and check in with RJ Marcus later on. Who says you can't get everything you want? Like going for bold without going broke. And staying true to your taste while staying on budget. Who says rising costs means lowering the bar? Settling, no need. Get the brands you want, the prices you want, whenever you want. TJ Maxx, where you can always afford to be you to the max. I never get tired of this. Making Angel Soft strong and soft. It's like magic. Every time. Angel Soft, soft and strong, simple. Without the right start to your day, your morning could hit a wall. It's not the bar. I got it. Velveeta Breakfast Biscuits are baked with slow-release carbs and provide steady morning energy to help you rise and thrive. 517, if you're like me, you may have thought this already existed, but Apple is apparently developing a MacBook Pro laptop with a touchscreen. ABC's Christy Aletto has details in today's Tech Bytes. Who says you can't get everything you want? Like going for bold without going broke. And staying true to your taste while staying on budget. Who says rising costs means lowering the bar? Settling, no need. Get the brands you want, the prices you want, whenever you want. Is that like when the wrong tab opens up on your laptop <laughs> and the wrong know. video that, runs the commercial instead of the right. story? The, the touch yeah. screen wasn't working at that point. <laughs> Some store owes us money. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so clearly that video wasn't in the right place this morning. You know that just from watching, but uh, we'll try to figure things out. Uh, the good news is uh, that RJ is over here with us this morning. Yes. Yeah, Yay. guys, glad Hi. to be with you. First time in 2023. Yes. I'm getting okay. hanging out with you guys. What is the latest you could say Happy New Year to someone? I was just going to ask you okay. that question because. I think, I think all of January is appropriate. Okay, all yeah. of January. Yeah. That kind of goes along with how long do they keep the label on a product that says new and improved? Oh, mm. there you go. Depends on how good yeah, the product is. 
That's and, my answer. And along with that, where's the end of the line? Is it this in or there? So, oh, never mind. God. <laughs> there we go, yes. <laughs> he started it. I know, sorry about that. I know, but, no. uh, hey guys, let's take a look out there at traffic this morning. Things looking pretty good so far. And uh, you know what? Happy New Year to everyone that uh, I haven't been able to hang out with here on Good Morning San Antonio. Glad to be with you all this morning. A uh, quick look at our maps here. Things looking pretty solid so far. Again, nothing major to speak of when we look at our traffic in our San Antonio area. Uh, one thing I did want to let people know about was that there is a vehicle fire that's being reported on Wurzbach Parkway at Perrin Vital Road. Does not seem to be causing any major issues. Again, not a major highway, but something that uh, definitely people in that area need to be aware of. Hey, you know what? Something else people need to be aware of is uh, some overpass work taking part in the eastern part of Bear County. Uh, so this is taking place through January 16th. So I uh, got a few more days of this right here, this I-10 westbound, the frontage road closure between Ackerman Road and Cornerway Boulevard. Again, just something that people need to keep aware of if they are heading out tonight. So things should be clear in that area. Again, things clearing out from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. So just be careful if you are headed out there. Let's take a look at Transguide real quick. I-10 at Woodlawn. Things looking pretty good this morning. And then we have another Transguide look here at 35 at FM 3009. Things looking pretty smooth. So we'll continue to follow roadways. Let you guys know if anything is going on out there. Mike, how are things looking out there this morning? Fantastic. And starting off with this picture from from yesterday. I love that. How gorgeous. A couple of little wispy clouds out there. And I love the silhouette of the, uh, the landscape and the, the horizon with the cross. That's absolutely beautiful. Going to have a uh, fantastic sunrise and sunset later on this evening. Got a lot of clear skies out there right now. Maybe a cloud or two. And that front move through right on schedule. And boy, the wind, as expected, is really blustery. Temperatures, and this is not one of those big Arctic fronts where, you know, temperatures just plummet in behind it. We will stay cooler. Actually, just back, basically back down to normal readings. We'll cool down a little bit more from this point this morning. Now, we've got some really dry air air in place and the dew point temperatures have dropped anywhere from 30 35 close to 40 degrees compared to this time yesterday thanks to the wind coming in here out of the north to northwest 10 15 miles per hour sustained winds and then the gust 24 hondo 28 new Braunfels, and we're going to be seeing wind gusts throughout the rest of the day anywhere from at peak times 30 to 35 miles per hour will continue to drop down a few more degrees with the stronger winds out there doesn't allow the heaviest coldest air. It's not the, the optimal situation for seeing some of the coldest temperatures, but eventually, like I said, that's going to be the case in the next couple of mornings. We will drop down to 55 degrees and then nice warm up, but it's not as though temperatures are just going to be skyrocketing today. Despite the fact we have this dry air, we're going to make it up into the low 60s at noon and then top off at 65. So we will get slightly cooler air moving on in here, but again, just staying at a normal or even a couple of degrees above that normal high temperature 65 and windy conditions. Now, high temperatures are going to be staying just about where they should be tomorrow as well as Saturday. Low 70s on Sunday and not as cool in the morning. I'll show you those numbers in a second. Then we're going to start to warm up again Monday and especially Tuesday. Another front moves through here, but again, it's not any sort of a, a big Arctic blast. It just kind of trims temperatures off a little bit. And then the lows tomorrow and Saturday, upper 30s here in town. So mid lower 30s in parts of the hill country. Still cool on Sunday morning, but a bit milder on Monday and it's not as though we're going to see anything like I said very arctic like as far as temperatures anytime soon and as far as rain chances maybe by next week Wednesday there's another front moving on through here just like I said to try and get rid of some of that humidity hopefully that squeezes out a couple of showers but until then yeah beautiful weather but dry 61 at noon sunny and windy high temperature today makes it up to 65 degrees and then tomorrow it is going to be much cooler grab a jacket this morning needless to say but yeah we'll definitely need it the next couple of mornings up to 65 degrees then in the afternoons because we're going to have light wind tonight so that allow temperatures to drop off pretty quickly if you think you can get away with a jacket this afternoon take one because once that sun goes down it'll cool off quickly tonight and then we're going to make it to uh, 72 on sunday 75 monday nice weather couple of extra clouds for the the march and all the activities for mlk day on monday and another front wednesday you know just kind of trims temperatures a little bit not any sort of a blast or barreling in here so all right temperatures all over the place kind of yep <laughs> thank you mike
Right now we're at 523, 62 degrees. Up next, we're going to tell you which movies are leading the Screen Actors Guild nominations. Plus, U2 is making old music new. 526, a couple of award-winning films keep getting more rewards, and U2 is re-recording some of their songs. Here's CNN's David Daniel with today's Hollywood Minute. I just don't like you no more. Did you like me yesterday? Award voters continue to like The Banshees of Inna Sharon and Everything Everywhere All at Once. Both films tied the record with five nominations for the Screen Actors Guild Awards, including the top prize, Best Ensemble. Banshees Golden Globe winner Colin Farrell received a SAG nod, as did his co-stars Brendan Gleeson, Barry Cogan, and Kerry Condon. From Everything Everywhere, SAG recognized Golden Globe winners Michelle Yeoh and ki Huey Kwan, as well as Jamie Lee Curtis and Stephanie Hsu. The 29th Screen Actors Guild Awards take place February 26th. 527 on your Thursday morning. Are you tired of spending too much money on eggs? Well, it looks like you're going to have to keep doing that for the time being. We're going to tell you what's driving up prices and how it's affecting other industries like restaurants and bakeries. And we have a precious pet standing by looking for a new home. We'll check what's going on over the Humane Society that has nothing to do with Michelle Yeoh. And are you ready to try Starry? We're going to tell you about Pepsi's new soda and why it's replacing Sierra Mist. The price of eggs skyrocketed lately. We'll tell you uh, an update on why it's still happening and when prices might go back to normal. Let's look out there with live cam. If you haven't stepped out already, it's going to be pretty breezy when you open that door. 62 degrees right now. And good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is January 12th. Uh, RJ, don't be shy. Come on up here to the desk with us. There you go. There you go. We want you Welcome. in the light. We want you, we want you well lit, and I mean that in a good way. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Be, be in the light area. Yes. Yeah, sure. Welcome. <laughs> Okay then, uh, the cold front moved right on schedule earlier this morning and uh, temperatures have not dropped all that much, but the humidity has really dropped off. The wind has definitely picked up. It's going to be blustery all day today. We've got a lot of clear skies out there. Beautiful view out there at the uh, airport. Sunrise is going to be just spectacular. 62 right now. Dew point stands at 21. That number is down anywhere from a good 30, close to 40 degrees compared to this time yesterday. Wind is out of the north primarily at to 13 miles per hour. Temperatures around the area again, nothing bone chilling cold. It's not like this was an Arctic front like we had right before Christmas. Keep referring to that one. This is a Pacific front where it gets rid of the humidity and that then will allow it not slightly cooler air, but that will allow temperatures, especially low temperatures with that drier air to, to get much lower. And that's going to be the case the next couple of mornings. 13 mile per hour winds here in town, 15 Port SA and uh, 12 up there in Kerrville. Then the wind gusts, 28 New Braunfels, 24 in Hondo and 27 Lost Maples. It's going to be gusty all day today. So of course that's going to shake up the mountain cedar trees. The updated count comes out later on this morning. Yesterday's reading was 4760. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what today's count is as well as tomorrow since it is going to be windy throughout the day and those uh, northwesterly winds again 15 25 miles per hour and gusty. We will drop down into the mid upper 50s and then come back up to 65 later on today. Just about what you would expect in the afternoons this time of year. Normal high being 63 degrees. Plenty of sunshine out there. How long does this beautiful weather last? Closer look at the long holiday weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. So, RJ, any big problems on the roads? Uh, not to speak of, Mike. Actually, things looking pretty good. And I uh, felt some of that uh, crisp air this morning. So maybe some people just decided to stay in a little bit. But that is good news for people that are out in the roads right now. I-10 at Woodlawn. Things looking pretty good right now. 35 at FM 3009 there. Things looking pretty solid as traffic moving smoothly through a lot of our main highways and major thoroughfares. So that is good news. Again, nothing major to speak of on our roadways right now. Even that vehicle fire that was out by Wurzbach Parkway and Perimbital Road. That has been cleared by the San Antonio Fire Department. So again, nothing major, major to speak of. So we are going to talk about some drilling work right now because this is something that is still affecting people on the northeast side, Loop 410, northeast San Antonio area. And this is still taking place through January 13th. So again, if you're going to be out in the middle of the night, overnight, just keep this in mind. This is drilling work starting at 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. And this is on the right shoulder. It's leading to some closures there at 410 eastbound between Perimbital and Interchange Parkway. But again, just something that's going to be in the area for the next couple of days. So just kind of keep that in mind as 
we go back outside with Transguide, 281 San Pedro, things looking pretty smooth, but we do, of course, expect for traffic to pick up just a little bit more as we get closer to our 6 o'clock hour. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. New this morning, what began as a traffic stop on the city's west side has ended with the death of a driver. Sheriff Javier Salazar says that driver was trying to get away from a deputy when he crashed and was killed. Katrina Weber is live on West Military near Marbuck Road. And Katrina, was there a chase going on at the time? Well, according to the sheriff, no, there wasn't. He says the deputy didn't even have a chance to start chasing the driver before he crashed and was killed. Now, this is where it happened. We have CPS Energy here cleaning up some of the mess. Uh, that driver went through a utility pole, shearing it pretty much in half, and then hit a parked tow truck and also uh, this U-Haul truck behind me. But let me give you a look at the video so you can get a better look. This started uh, right around 1 o'clock this morning. The sheriff says that the uh, the deputy was trying to stop a driver or had actually pulled over a driver about a mile away from here. When he approached the driver, the sheriff says the deputy noticed what looked like narcotics on his seat, started questioning the driver who handed over a bag of pills. Well, the deputy says the driver then told him that he had a gun. The deputy told him to get out of the car. He said no and then took off. Now, uh, according to the sheriff, the deputy had not even gotten back to his own car. Uh, when this apparently happened, the deputy he was driving around looking for that driver who took off and stumbled upon this wreckage site. Uh, that driver was ejected from his car and killed here at the scene. The sheriff says that they searched his car. They found a backpack containing what looked like packaged bundles of marijuana and a scale. They also did find a gun uh, with that driver who was in his 20s or 30s just sort of trying to make a positive ID. Uh, but again, no, um, I guess no reason for why he ran at this point other than um, they can guess what uh, based on what they found inside that driver's car uh, may have had something to do with why he did run from that deputy. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. 536, the latest inflation numbers are coming out this morning and they could show another month of cooling prices. But as ABC's Andrea Fujii reports, when it comes to eggs, Americans are shelling out a staggering amount of money for the supermarket staple. This morning, with grocery prices, especially eggs, putting a bigger dent in Americans' wallets, analysts have high hopes for the new government report on inflation due out today. It's expected to show consumer prices last month rose 6.5 percent compared to a year ago. That's encouraging when compared to the 7.1 percent increase in November, but not nearly enough relief for most shoppers. It's just too much. It's too much. I don't want to buy any. I can't afford it. Overall, food prices rose about 12 percent in the last year, but eggs have been a whole different story, with prices more than doubling, even tripling in some areas. Shoppers at one store in New York reporting a carton of eggs now costs more than $11. Restaurants say they can't keep up. We used to get a case for about $27, and now we're getting them for about $150. It's not just inflation. The worst bird flu outbreak in years has taken a toll on the industry, coupled with high demand during the recent holiday baking season, leading to shortages in some areas. The Agriculture Department says bird flu has reduced the egg-laying hen population by more than 40 million. If the egg price is still so high, we will have to increase the price again. Last week, I did a lot of custards and stuff like that, so I didn't do any muffins because you have to find that that toss up between what are we going to be able to offer. The good news is some experts believe egg prices may have peaked, but they're expected to remain high through spring. As for the inflation report due out today, if the news isn't good, expect the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates yet again. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. The Supreme Court will now allow a new gun control law to stand in New York. New York law requires people to show they have good moral character before they can buy a gun. The measure also bans guns in many public places. Legislators passed the law last July, a month after the high court struck down the state's concealed carry gun law. Just justices did not explain their decision regarding Wednesday's ruling, but two justices, Samuel Alito and Clarence Thomas, say they are keeping close watch on lower court rulings to make sure they do not contradict the high court's recent decision to expand gun rights nationwide. 
A shakeup at Disney may be a precursor of things to come. The company announced Mark Parkner as the new chair of its board Wednesday. Disney says one of the reasons Parkner is a good fit is because he navigated a successful CEO transition over at Nike. Bob Iger returned to Disney as chief executive late last year. Disney is in turmoil after its streaming business lost $1.5 billion last quarter. The company has seen its value crash by nearly 40% in the last 12 months. Time now, it's 539 and 62 degrees for now. Move over, Sierra Mist. Why Pepsi is ditching their Sprite rival for a brand new soda. Also next, why the Consumer Product Safety Commissioner says he was considering a ban on gas stoves in the U.S. and what the White House is saying about the suggestion. Outside with live cam, Mike says hold on to your hat today. We've got gusty winds in the forecast. Already seeing some of that in the early morning hours of your Thursday. And then we'll check in on traffic with RJ Marquez. And welcome back to 542 in your morning consumer headlines. The White House confirms President Joe Biden does not support a ban on gas stoves. That comes after Consumer Pro Product Safety Commissioner Richard Trumka suggested to Bloomberg he may pursue such action. He told the outlet gas stoves are a hidden hazard and that products that can't be made safe can be banned. Pollutants from gas stoves have been linked to asthma and other respiratory conditions, but more than a third of households in the U.S. have them. The CPSC also confirmed it is not planning to ban gas stoves. However, it might seek to restrict emissions on them. One industry trade group says improving ventilation in homes would be the best solution. Pepsi is looking to the stars to compete with Coca-Cola's popular Sprite. The beverage company is launching a new lemon-lime soda called Starry. This will replace its previous offering, Sierra Mist. Sierra Mist is out of here. Despite 24 years on the market, Sierra Mist never cut into Sprite sales. Many saw it as an imitation of Sprite. But Pepsi says Starry is different. It's fruitier and more aromatic than Sierra Mist. The caffeine-free drink comes in regular and sugar-free. It'll be available this week in grocery and convenience stores. Okay, sounds cute. We'll see what happens. Time and time now, 543 and 61 degrees for now. Up next, we'll check in with the Humane Society and a little puppers that needs a new home. And let's look out there with Trans Guy looking over at I-10 at Woodlawn where things are moving. Also looking at I-35, didn't seem to be any problems there, but we're gonna check in with RJ Marquez very soon. We'll talk about a little mom's baby here. Yeah. This, I can't say little one, because this is not a little dog at all. Chelsea's here with the San Antonio Humane Society. Oh my goodness gracious, who is this baby? So this is Caramel. She's a super sweet three-month-old Anatolian Shepherd mix. And if you've never heard of Anato Anatolian Shepherd, um, it means big. Yeah. <laughs> yes. These dogs can be 150 pounds. Yeah. I was just uh, reading about it, but oh my goodness gracious, she, look at the size of those paws there and only again three months old and you're kind of getting tired holding her right yeah that big? she's a little heavy but you know it's worth it she's very cute <laughs> sweet as can hello sweetie yeah. and still has Aww. yeah still has puppy <laughs> breath and like i said the the little puppy fur right there but she's going to take the the extra big big bags of dog food yeah. if you adopt this little baby oh yeah definitely but she's going to be a big girl but she's going to she's very loving she loves to be around people yeah can you get yeah. a close up okay Here what y'all got going on there so if you want to spend time with some puppies just to like caramel here, we would love to have more volunteers. We always need volunteers. Okay. It's something that um, would be great for the new year if you have kind of a resolution to give back a little bit more. It's a great way to, you know, get involved in the community, spend some time with some cute animals. Let's turn this way so we can see a little face there. And yes, yeah. and you can, uh, <laughs> it's as much time as you can give. I mean, be it a couple uh -huh. of hours, be it a long time, yeah. or if you'd like to volunteer even in the office, they can always use that. And for uh, high school kids, you can get volunteer hours Definitely. as well. So Definitely. don't forget about fostering too. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness gracious, I just fell in love with this baby. Well, if you'd like <laughs> more so information <laughs> on this little one or all the other pets and volunteer cheering out there at the San Antonio Humane Society, 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461. Thank you, Chelsea. Thank you so much. How cute, I know, but that it's is, gonna be big. It is, but you know that going into it, <laughs> yeah. and looks very sweet, 548.
Let's go ahead and check back with RJ. I saw more vehicles there on I-35. Yeah, starting to see a little bit of a buildup here on the northeast side. By the way, I, they always come up with the greatest names for the Humane Society, Caramel. Perfect. Love that name for that pup there. Hopefully she finds herself a good home. But uh, it's going back to traffic here. Was hoping we'd get through the 5 o'clock hour without any major incidents. Not a huge thing going on here, but again, a stalled vehicle holding up some traffic here at I-35 at Topper Wine. You can see we just had Transguide uh, put on these this camera for us, so it's kind of getting our first look at what is going on there on the northeast side. Now, as far as traffic, all right, so within the past two minutes, we are now seeing the traffic sort of build up here. These are the southbound lanes. Again, I-35 at Topper Wine Road out in the northeast side, right before you get to that very busy 1604-35 intersection over in the Live Oak area. And again, this just basically was being reported by our maps now showing some sort of delay. So we will continue to follow this as we continue to move along through our morning. As we take a look at the wide map now, and you can see a lot of green here. So things looking pretty smooth throughout the rest of the San Antonio area. Nothing major to speak of. But again, as we get closer to 6 o'clock, expect traffic to build up here in just a little bit. So one more look here, I-35 Topper Wine. Again, this is the biggest thing that we're following throughout the morning and traffic starting to build up just a little bit guys as people make their way out on this Wednesday morning but uh, again I kind of jinx myself because I was saying wow we're really looking pretty good out there should have never said that <laughs> that's how it goes sometimes yeah, now we're back to yeah some traffic delays we've seen that happen in the past mm -hmm. RJ glad you're here this morning my friend yeah yeah, yeah great to be with you guys uh, hanging out first time again in 2023 mm -hmm. and to spend some time with y'all yes sir and back to the dog the cute names are to try and hook you in uh, uh, of course not me. <laughs> Not you. And a little puppy breath and the yeah. soft fur, but oh, yeah, uh, but she was really yeah. cute. And yeah, I showed a picture of that to my wife when we recorded that last uh -huh. week, and then told her, yeah, 150 pounds. She's like, uh, yeah, that's like it's probably a uh, that's <laughs> bigger than her, you know. So yeah, when that's a big. Oh, so sweet though. Anyway, all right, uh, step outside right now, and it feels a whole lot better out there. There's a gorgeous, gorgeous picture, as you can see. This is from the uh, hill country. A couple of clouds yesterday that were still uh, hanging around here. And we may have one or two clouds this morning. Got a lot of clear skies, though. When I walked outside, it was just like, oh, my goodness, so nice. And the air is so dry out there. We're still on the warm side of things. We're still close to the normal high temperature, not anywhere near the normal low, which is 41 degrees right now. But the uh, dew points have dropped down a good 30, 40 degrees, degrees compared to this time yesterday. 10, 15, uh, almost 20 mile per hour sustained winds and then gusts 24, 28 at Hondo and New Braunfels respectively. It's going to be gusty throughout the rest of today. Here's the uh, satellite radar picture. And as you can see, this nice northwesterly flow in the atmosphere, a couple little sprinkles well off to the east and northeast as expected. This thing was going to be coming through dry and there's those few clouds in portions of the hill country one or two of them out there that may continue to kind of sweep past the area so taking into that taking that into account other than that, we'll have uh, just nothing but sunshine today. Temperatures will drop down a few more degrees in the next couple of hours, and then we'll just kind of bounce back to where we are right now. Low to mid 60s later on this afternoon, topping off at 65 degrees. Sunshine out there. Windy conditions, though. So hang on to your hat. And even though wind chill formulas don't come into play when you're above 50, it's still going to feel cooler than what it actually is. And then the wind's going to be settling down tonight once the sun goes down. So it's going to cool off pretty quickly, and then we will get chillier tomorrow. So once again, the upper level uh, air pattern, yes, there's somewhat of a a modified roller coaster to it, but none of the, you know, the, the first drop on a roller coaster, which that's the big one, nothing like that coming in out of Canada right now. So all of the really, really cold air is staying there up there further to the north. Here's the northwesterly flow in behind the front that moved through, pulling in the drier air. That's going to remain the case for the next couple of days. Then we start to see a bit of a return of the moisture coming in here Sunday into early Monday. Another weak little front was going to dry us out as we or try to dry us out a little bit going into Monday, Tuesday. And that next low moving past the area is going to give us a chance for some rain. Another front is going to move through here. Not an Arctic blast, but hopefully that squeezes out a couple of showers. But nothing that looks really, really promising as far as rain and at least through the middle of next week, nothing brutally cold, no real, real cold January stuff. 61 degrees at noon, sunny, windy, and then a high temperature today up to 65. Gorgeous day, beautiful. Roll down the windows this afternoon. Make sure you roll them up, though, because it's going to get cold tonight once that wind settles down. Dry air, clear skies down to the upper 30s here in town the next couple of mornings. So 
right around going to be a lot of freezing temperatures in the hill country the next couple of mornings 48 starting off Sunday overall through Sunday fantastic and Monday a few more clouds long holiday weekend of course 75 on Monday getting up to 80 Tuesday and just kind of trimming temperatures down by the middle of next week. Maybe you got a new coat or gloves or scarf for Christmas and you can test them out. Yeah, just for a little bit. A little bit for a couple yeah. hours in the morning and then by the <laughs> afternoon it's like, okay, enough. Okay, so. we'll be prepared. Thank you, Mike. 554, 61 degrees. Let's look at your winning lot of numbers. Pick 3820, Fireball 5, Daily 4, 83681, Fireball 8. And here are the rest of your numbers. Cash 5, 1, 8, 13, 19, 22. Lotto, Texas, 4, 16, 33, 41, 52, 53. And take a look at Powerball. No winners. That jackpot's up to $404 million. 4, 8, 46, 47, 48. The Powerball 5, Power Play 3. San Antonio making its mark on a major list. Report from Lawn Love ranked San Antonio number 15 for the most green space. We beat out other major Texas cities like Austin, hmm, Dallas, and Houston. You can check out the list right now on KSAT.com. Ahead in the next hour of the morning show, GMSA, Florida and California have traditionally been the home for Universal Studios theme parks, but Get ready, Texans. We're about to have our own Universal theme park here in the Lone Star State. We'll tell you where and when it will be set up. Trans guide right now, RJ is helping us keep tabs on thing right now. things right now. It looks like we have a stalled vehicle or some sort of incident. I'm not sure at 90 and couples, but he's gonna try to get us more information coming up here after the break.